Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. I have finally got a free moment to record this video because for the last few weeks I've been busy with my volunteering activities. Ще у нас така посилочка з перший раз прийшло зі Швеції Константин. Він з Стокгольма прислав нам таку посилку. Вот тут написано Бабичу Андрію Мотолайв 93-я бригада. Not everything I can show and want to show on public, but I can tell you for sure that Ukraine will be liberated from the Russians and Belgorod People Republic will be also liberated from the Russians. Nevertheless, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, this weird motherboard with an onboard CPU. And this one is Airin with the i5-12500H. Uh, the motherboard comes in such box. And unboxing video you can find in my secondary channel with a quick overview of the specification. In this video I'm going to follow my printout as usual and cover all the important aspects and all the important information about this motherboard so you can make your decision whether you want or don't want such one in your gaming computer or a workstation. Let's start with the most important technical specification of this motherboard with onboard i5-12500H. This is a mobile CPU and even though it's i5 it comes only with 4P cores. We also have 8E cores or efficient cores but essentially it's Core i3-12100 with extra 8 efficient cores. The clock frequency is up to 4.5 GHz for the P cores and up to 3.3 GHz for the efficient cores. On the motherboard you will find two RAM slots for DDR4 in dual channel configuration and also PCI Express X16, PCI Express X4 slots, two M.2 slots for NVMe SSD drives and unfortunately the PCI Express X16 slot works at PCI Express X8 bandwidth. PCI Express 4.0 speed is supported, thus if your graphics card supports PCI Express 4.0 the performance degradation will be negligible, but if your graphics card is limited to PCI Express 3.0 you may get performance degradation in certain games up to 5%. Now, to install a cooler on top of this Airin motherboard, you need an LGA1200 or LGA1151 compatible cooler because the holes are from that socket and not from LGA1700. The custom-made IHS is a bit too thick or a bit too tall and thus you cannot install the standard Intel box coolers or any other clip-on cooler. The only possibility is to install a cooler that uh, uses long screws for mounting because if the screws are too short, the mounting pressure will be not enough or the screws may just break out. This too thick or too tall uh, custom-made IHS also causes problems with the CPU cooling. Even though I have repasted my CPU, under stress test the CPU immediately hits 95 or 100 degrees Celsius. Regarding the performance I will talk a little bit later. For now, to make this thing work you need drivers, and of course you could try to download drivers from the Airin official webpage, but I would not recommend you doing that. Because Chinese software has no guarantee that it actually works, that it is up to date and that it does not have any viruses. In my case, I have used drivers from Intel NUC or Intel NUC. Link to download these drivers will be available in the video description as always. Let's talk about the performance, and here is where I have got my first big disappointment. This CPU has a hard lock of 4595 watts of electricity consumption. The first minute or the first 55 seconds the CPU is consuming up to 95 watts and here it boosts to the maximum 4.4 GHz clock frequency and hits up to 9500 degrees Celsius. After that the CPU throttles down to 45 watts and here the clock frequency is significantly reduced. I have tried to use different BIOS settings to remove this TDP limitation with no success. In the BIOS there is an overclocking section, but as soon as I enable this overclocking section the motherboard would simply refuse to boot. There are some hidden options in the BIOS that can be unlocked on the Advanced tab by clicking Ctrl F8. There you can find TDP configuration for the CPU, but unfortunately this configuration is absolutely and totally ignored by the CPU. No matter what I enter, the CPU still maintains its hard lock of 4595 watt. I have also tried the Throttle Stop application and Intel XTU application with no success. Sure, I tried to talk to the AliExpress seller and did not get any meaningful help or any meaningful feedback. 
The next big disappointment is the memory compatibility. Even though the motherboard supports DDR4, I was not able to start it with any of my DDR4 kits if I enable XMP profile. I have tried DDR4-3200, DDR4-3600 memory kits and none of them started with the XMP settings. The best I could get is when I use Corsair DDR4-3600 CL18 and DDR4-3200 CL17. This is a very big disappointment and I tried to talk to the Aliexpress seller, maybe they have a better buys with better memory compatibility. Instead, they offered me a $10 discount if I do not tell about this problem on my YouTube channel. Of course, I have rejected this generous offer and now I'm telling about this and other problems I have got with this A-Ring motherboard equipped with i5-12500H. Now let's take a look at some synthetic benchmarks and let me start with the CPU-Z because on the Aliexpress page you can see a CPU-Z benchmark screenshot. And indeed, when I just start up my system and run CPU-Z benchmark, I get about the same scores as what they show. So we have about 730 points with a single core and about 6300 with all cores used. And this is kind of better than i3-12100 because i3-12100 scores about 690 points when one core used and only 3400 when all four cores are used. The problem here is that if I run the same benchmark after the CPU goes into the throttle mode and limits itself to 45 TDP power consumption, I get drastically different scores and of course on Aliexpress they will not show it. So after the throttle kicks in, the CPU scores only 406 points with one core and only 4783 points with all cores. So the performance after the throttle is almost half as much compared to the full potential of the CPU. In Cinebench R23, I run the test for 10 minutes, so that's the CPU has enough time to throttle itself down, so here the extra 8 E cores provide almost no extra performance compared to the desktop i3-12100. So when running the test with only one CPU core, we have about 1723 points, and with all CPU cores about 10700 points. I3-12100 on the other hand scores 1624 points with one core and 8447 points with all CPU cores. As you can see, the performance between these two CPUs is very, very similar. I have also performed a few extra synthetic benchmarks, results you can see on your screen, but I will switch to the gaming benchmarks. I test my games with the AMD RX 7900 XT, this is a very powerful graphics card and it supports PCI Express 4.0, thus the PCI Express X8 bandwidth is not a big limitation here. Nevertheless, the performance between i5-12500H is almost identical to i3-12100. On average, across 5 tested games, i5 scores 140 and 209 FPS, while i3 delivers 138 and 208 FPS. As you can see, the extra 8 efficient cores are next to useless in gaming. The performance is most likely limited by the memory because i5-12500H is not able to reach the same memory speed and the same memory latency as i3-12100. For the extra notes, what I can say, this Airin i5-12500H motherboard combo has the standard Chinese issues, and namely, the smart fun function works only for 4-pin PWM fans, it does not work with the 3-pin fans. The motherboard also does not have VRM temperature sensor, and the BIOS does not have recovery option. So if, for example, you enter too tight timing or you try to overclock your RAM, the motherboard will simply refuse to start. You have to clear CMOS manually and only after that the motherboard will start and you will have to do reconfiguration all over again. Regarding the VRM, I cannot say much. You can see the detailed technical specification on your screen, but the CPU has 45W TDP limitation for continuous load. And with such load, even the simplest and the crappiest VRM will be enough. All in all, what I can say about Airin motherboard with the onboard i5-12500H CPU. In general, it's an interesting piece of hardware and what I like about it is that it fits in Cooler Master NR200 chassis. But for 220 euros plus VAT, this is a total nonsense. For the same money, you can buy a H610 motherboard with a normal i3-12100 or maybe you could even find an i5-12400 on the second-hand market. 
if the motherboard would cost about 140-150 euros, I could have recommended it, but with the current price, I simply cannot do that. The motherboard has too many issues, too many flaws, and the performance is not much better or almost not any better than Core i3-12100F. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and educational, bye for now.